A disclaimer before the video starts. This video does contain images of a flickering CRT. If you are sensitive to this kind of video footage, viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to Kilwatt Retro Tech. Hope you're having an amazing day. Now, we are once again in front of the iMac. Except, this time I'm not doing some weird challenge, I'm just experimenting with software here. So today, I am actually answering a question that has been actually bothering me for quite some time. More or less since I got this thing. Can this thing emulate other consoles? Now, the answer to that question is yes, probably. But to what effect is... <laughs> I forgot I set the um, hour chime on this thing. But to what effect that emulation is, it depends on how the software was written and whether or not this uh, uh, the hardware and whether or not the hardware is up to the task. Now, I thought I would start this little series, little mini-series that I'm doing here, off easy, by doing NES stuff. But now I'm really thinking about it, SNES emulation requires a crazy, beefy CPU to actually do properly. Uh, and I know we're not talking about SNES, we're talking about NES here, but still, I mean, there's a chance that it still might not work correctly, but, um, I've got two emulators to test here today, and, uh, four NES games. I've got Top Gun, Mario Bros., Mario Bros. 3, and Tetris. So we're gonna be seeing how each of those games perform here in XNES and Rock NES. We're gonna start with XNES here. Super Mario Bros. Okay, looking pretty good so far. Not sure why it's not letting me access the control strip, but okay. Let's see, what kind of things we got here? Ooh, that is very pleasant. I'm going to turn on interlacing because technically the NES is kind of made for that, sort of. Off by default, though. I don't know. Whoa, that's not correct. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Um, I can't help but notice that there's no advanced options or even a way to enable or disable sound. Uh, so, okay. Return seems to be start. Okay. We got Mario... Doesn't seem to be walking correctly here. Oh, it's space not. Hmm. I wonder what the. Okay. Option is jump. Okay, I I get you because reasons. We're going with that logic now. It's my favorite kind of logic, just because reasons. Okay, I. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Well, um, that title screen was not false advertising. This is unplayable in pretty much the most interesting way that I've ever heard, and I think I just fell down a pit. <laughs> I can't even hear what's going on, so, like, and I expect space to be jump. Ah, oh, man, this is actually unplayable. Okay, uh, yeah, let's close out of that. Um, I don't expect any of the other games to perform well either. Uh, let's go a little simpler Tetris. If that will even launch. Looks like that's not even launching. Okay. Mario right, Bros. 3? Um, yeah, a slightly different response, okay, but still not wanting launch. And the last one, Top Gun. Oh! Uh, 
Uh, that's kind of working. Kind of like Mario. I push this. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, the the flight thing is automated. Uh, I'm not sure if it recognized my. St no, it did not. Okay, that graphic loaded. I'm not 100% sure if that was correct, but that looks vaguely correct. I have to double check this was running on actual hardware. I know this isn't looking right, but I don't know how not right it is. I am able to play it, though. And it, it, it actually looks playable. Aside from the the fact that there's no sound, I argue that somehow Top Gun is more playable than freaking Super Mario Bros. I would think, if anything, Super Mario Bros. would be the most playable game. If anything, it's because it's the first game, or one of the first games that came out with this system, so they're, like, theoretically simpler. Maybe that's not the case? Even though this game seems at least would be uh, pretty complex to code for the NES, huh? Weird. Well, that was all the all of the games I have uh, for X NES. Let's try Rock NES. For some reason, I opened down there. That was weird. Rock NES requires the Famicom Disk System BIOS image to run FDS games. I'm not running FDS games, so that won't be a problem. Mario Bros. Okay. So far, it looks pretty good. Um, we do have more options, including network games. Okay. I'll have to check that out at some point, but I can't make any promises. Uh... We've got recording gameplay. We've got keyboard, input sprocket. I'm not sure. Not available at all under Mac OS X. On older systems, make sure input sprocket extension. Okay, so it, that's related to something I don't have installed right now. Uh, freeze slash defrost game slate. Oh man, that is cheesy AF. Um, still can't help but no. Oh, okay. Looks like there is sound emulation and even a speed limit. Okay, uh, I'm looking forward to this actually. Hey, we got sound. I'm actually gonna turn it down just a little bit. Sweet! Okay, same... Whoa. Hey, I died and I could tell that I died. Okay, Rock NES is where it's at, baby. Oh man, this is awesome. Okay. Um... XNES really tanked my expectations. Because this is awesome. Not running in full screen, though not in the way that I expected it to. Ooh, I have Game Genie options. Man, this emulator has a lot more options. Uh, I don't think there's a way to change the resolution, which is kind of a big bummer. But at the same time, I'm kind of just impressed that this is working at all. You know, the, the sound emulation isn't perfect, but uh, I kind of didn't expect it to be perfect. I mean, the fact that this is playable at 
all compared to uh, XNES. It's just amazing. Maybe, maybe XNES was um, was one of those emulators that just kind of died halfway through development. I don't know. Or maybe Rock NES evolved into XNES. I don't know. The emulator scene can be kind of weird sometimes. Yeah, I'm playing an NES game on my iMac G3. That's really cool. And, you know, you might be asking me something to the effect of, you have an actual NES, you have many other machines that are capable of emulating the NES, including an NES Mini. Why are you doing it on an iMac G3? Uh, mostly because I wanted to see what games would look like on an IMAX CRT. But also, I, I just want to because. Just, you know, taking a look at, at a lot of modern systems, like my 2012 Mac Mini or my Workhorse PC. You know, everybody knows that those kinds of computers are based off of Intel CPUs. And that's like... Up until about 2020 with Apple's new silicon architecture, it's, it's, Intel is basically the default if it's not a mobile device. So, everybody knows more or less how this kind of emulation will perform on an Intel system. This, not so much. These, uh, older Macs pre about 2005-ish, if you don't know, is based off of an architecture called PowerPC, which basically means that even though it is like a processor that kind of uses a lot of the same instructions, it essentially speaks a different language, kind of like English versus Spanish. There's a lot of words that overlap, but the overall experience is very different. So, okay, uh, Tetris didn't work at all with XNES, so it's good to see it working here. And I'm pretty sure there's a couple of Tetris Mac clones, but this isn't what we're here for. Okay. It's weird playing Tetris on a keyboard, but hey, it's actually working. I do have a version of Tetris that has the actual OG Game Boy uh, soundtrack. Uh, I might have to rip that from my NES Mini at some point, or see if I can find that somewhere else in my storage devices somewhere. It seems to be working perfectly. Whoa, escape does full screen. Interesting. Okay, let's test it. Okay, no, that's... Oh, yeah. Rock NES is the one I want. Okay, never mind. Uh... Gotta test uh, two more games here. Okay, visually it's looking a little bit weird. It seems to be loading three, Mario Bros. 3, when XNES did not. Okay. Option for A, control for B, I assume. Hell yeah. Actually, I actually really like this game. I have some fond memories of it. Obviously, um, I'm 22, 
so I never really got the chance to play this game when it was brand new. Oh! Shift is B. That's a really weird control scheme. Um, anyways. But I do have a few fond memories of it. Um, I remember playing it once at a, I think a GameStop. A long time ago had an NES and Mario 3 hooked up. Um, when I was like six or something. Um, but I also have fond memories of playing this game, um on a Wii Virtual Console, because my, my dad, my dad was uh, very nice and got that for me one day. Thanks, Dad. I almost regret turning, um, <laughs> I very much regret trading in that Wii for a Kinect. Yes, you heard that right. I traded in my Wii for a Kinect. I don't, I don't hate the Kinect, but the Wii was a lot stronger of a connection to my childhood. Anyways, <laughs> that's getting off topic. Yeah, this, uh, this Rock NES program is actually functioning a lot better than I expected it would. Last one, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work, uh, considering it worked on the last emulator. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no way to uh, make this run at a higher resolution. That seems to be a thing of only, like, much newer uh, emulators. Okay, yeah, that's actually being emulated properly. Okay, that map does still look correct, so it's just like that. Although, it does, I don't know if it's just me, but that seems a little bit more detailed. Oh, I didn't even notice! This whole, like, second half of the screen wasn't showing up properly in the other emulator. For some reason, I just assumed it was like that, but that's clearly not. Holy crap. I didn't even notice. Holy, wow. How did I not notice that? I've played this game before. I, I, this is one of the few games in my physical library. I should have noticed that. I even played this on camera before. Jeez. But yeah, I mean, Rock NES for uh, Mac OS 9 seems to work pretty well, at least with this uh, G3 processor at 400 megahertz. Just kind of flying around, seeing what happens here. Whoa, okay. Managed to shoot down that missile. Can I loop around? I don't think it's going to let me do that. I don't know how to defend against that. I'm still very new to this game. You know, Top Gun, you know, back in my day, I, I think I did watch Top Gun. And, you know, my, my dad, of course, being a male back in the day, was uh, fairly, fairly into Top Gun, at least a little bit. Um, when the, the part of Top Gun that really stuck out to me wasn't necessarily the, the plot or just the fact that it's centered around, you know, fighter jets like this. It was the soundtrack, and specifically the Top Gun Anthem. Not da- okay. Not Danger Zone. The Top Gun Anthem, specific to Top Gun. I first heard that um, as part of Guitar Hero 3's OST. Um, 
and I've absolutely loved that solo ever since. I aim to fully learn how to play that someday. I even have it on Rocksmith. Um, and I can, I can play most of that song. It's just a solo that I'm still struggling really hard with. Oh, I managed to survive. Okay, then. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. And, <clears throat> geez. And that's where that footage ends, because my server ended up crashing at the tail end of rendering this video and I want to get something out of there and fortunately most of that video is usable. So, I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with my server because that is not acceptable. Blah blah blah. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a PowerPC Macintosh and you want to do some emulation, apparently there is uh, some way to do it. I'm going to continue to explore other kinds of emulations on uh, the early Macintosh platform. For now, though, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to support me a little bit more directly, I have some cool things lined up in the future that will be related to that. I also have some cool music linked in the description below. And I do have a Patreon page that starts at $1 a month. Speaking of patrons, I have to thank my Kilo supporter, Indian Mac, for helping make Cobalt Retro Tech possible. Thank you. And with all that being said, I'll see you in the next one.